A former employee of the US plane maker Boeing who turned whistleblower has been found dead. You must have heard stories about the rise and fall of a person. But when was the last time you saw a giant company fall from a height? Meet Boeing. A new word for Boeing after a Delta flight lost a wheel just as it was about to take off this weekend. It's the latest in a series of mishaps for the aviation giant. Investigators try and figure out why a gaping hole blew open on an Alaska Airlines plane mid-flight after taking off from Portland. It was clear from the get-go that Boeing was in full crisis mode. As the facts from the accident become available and we understand the necessary next steps, we're taking action to fully reassure airlines and their passengers of the safety of the 737 MAX. Welcome to the Rich Havit Channel. Today, we explore the complex world of corporate dynamics and industry insights. We will see Boeing's journey through triumphs and challenges, from its innovative strides in aircraft manufacturing to the complexities of navigating market pressures and internal struggles. Stay tuned as we unravel the story behind one of the world's most renowned aerospace giants and examine the lessons learned along the way. It was not always so dire. Before Boeing was rocked by a door plug scandal and the tragic nosedives of two 737 MAX planes, there was a literal earthquake. At 10.55 on the morning of February 28, 2001, a magnitude 6.8 quake shook the Pacific Northwest, causing havoc at various Boeing facilities in the region. One building in particular, 1085 housing engineers working on the highly sought after 737 suffered damage. However, rather than being a disaster, this event became an opportunity for Boeing to showcase its resilience. Instead of relocating staff or rebuilding offices, Boeing Commercial Airplanes leadership made a bold decision. They moved to the waterfront. The Renton campus, home to 737 assemblies since the 1970s, had expanded to nearly 300 acres by the 1990s. Amidst the demand for more affordable passenger planes, technological advancements, and the need for efficient production, Boeing introduced the 737 Next Generation in 1993. In addition to the advancements of the 737 nanograms, Boeing aimed to revolutionize its manufacturing processes. Inspired by Japanese companies like Toyota, Boeing executives embraced lean methodology and just-in-time principles to simplify the supply chain and reduce idle inventory. By 2000, these concepts had permeated the factory floor, helping Boeing keep pace with orders and improve efficiency. In Renton, Boeing undertook extensive cleaning, simplification, organization, and disposal of excess inventory and clutter. This effort freed up acres of previously occupied floor space and storage. Instead of expanding to meet demand, Boeing chose to downsize. When the earthquake hit the region, followed by the events of 9-11, Boeing capitalized on the disruption and slowdown by consolidating its entire 737 team, from ground-level machinists to senior engineers, into a single building. Through effective decluttering, Boeing relocated engineering and business offices to three buildings situated along the east, west, and center boundaries of the floor. By bringing machinists, engineers, and management closer together, issues in assembly, pain points, and production delays were systematically addressed. By implementing a moving assembly line, transporting the plane from one station to the next at a rate of two inches per hour, the factory increased output to over 30 planes per month by 2010. This initiative eventually reduced individual production time from 22 days to just 11. With the relocation to the waterfront completed, nearly 8,000 NGs were launched into the sky over the next 20 years making the third generation 737 the best-selling model of what was then the world's top-selling commercial aircraft. Boeing's achievement of producing a safe, reliable product through a quick, efficient, and stable model, fostering collaboration, communication from leadership, and continuous improvement involving both engineers and on-the-floor machinists, marked the company's peak by the mid-2000s. In addition to the successful launch of the 777 in 1995, 
which remains the most popular wide-body plane worldwide, the development of the 737 nanograms, the proactive restructuring of its Renton factory, and strategic maneuvering to maintain an edge over Airbus, Boeing enjoyed a period of increasing reliability and reverence as an American institution. However, while reaching a peak is challenging, maintaining it presents its own set of difficulties, with the potential for decline never too far off. Around the same time, the company embarked on a bold project with an ambitious business model not far from its Renton factory. Located 36 miles or 58 kilometers north on Highway 405 is Boeing's Everett factory, the largest single building in the world, where its challenges first emerged. Embarking on new plane projects inevitably involves some trial and error, but it was the approach taken that underscored Boeing's rapid descent. In 2003, Boeing announced its plans to develop the 787 Dreamliner. Tired of the traditional cycle of hefty spending followed by years of waiting for profits, the board, CEO, and investors demanded faster returns. They aimed to accomplish this at less than half the cost incurred for the 777 a decade earlier. To add to the challenge, Boeing intended to introduce a range of new technologies, most notably the first majority composite airframe in commercial aircraft history, representing a fundamental shift in jetliner construction. Boeing's solution lay in its past. A decade prior, McDonnell Douglas was the last major American commercial aircraft manufacturer before being acquired by Boeing in 1997. Facing financial struggles, McDonnell Douglas lacked the resources to develop a new aircraft. Instead, it rallied a consortium of suppliers to share the design risk. Each supplier would finance the design of their respective parts, with McDonnell Douglas assembling them into the aircraft and profits would be shared based on sales. While the attempt to revive its fortunes with the MD-95, later rebranded as the 717, encountered major obstacles and limited financial success, Boeing, now merged with McDonnell Douglas, adopted a similar strategy when tasked with developing a new aircraft at lower costs. This involved assembling subcontractors, such as Japan's heavy industrial conglomerates, Alenia Aeronautica, and Vought Aircraft Industries, and assigning them parts with the additional responsibility of designing them. Crucially, Boeing minimized its financial commitment to development following the model established by the failed MD-95 venture. Once more, to secure contracts, the subcontractors had to bear the majority of the initial development costs and recoup their investment over the long term through payments from Boeing and airlines for parts, spares, and maintenance, or at least attempt to do so. Despite this disadvantageous arrangement for the subcontractors, it became evident that their consent was irrelevant. With its significant market dominance, controlling half of the commercial aircraft market, Boeing wielded immense negotiating power. Any contract with Boeing was preferable to none at all, leading subcontractors to acquiesce to Boeing's terms. Thus, Boeing's ambitious plan to develop its most technologically advanced aircraft at a fraction of the usual development costs progressed. However, this endeavor encountered significant challenges. The aircraft faced a three-year delay, and upon its unveiling to reporters, dignitaries, and employees on 787, observers noted significant deficiencies. The aircraft lacked essential components, such as flooring, wiring, systems, and plumbing, rendering it more of a shell than a functional plane. Despite eventual entry into service with airlines, the anticipated cost benefits from new technologies did not materialize fully. Moreover, the aircraft experienced initial difficulties in commercial operation, including incidents of thermal runaway in its lithium-ion batteries, leading to a month-long grounding in 2013. While the 787 has been outwardly successful for Boeing, 2023 saw over 30 new orders and the delivery of the 1,100th unit. It has failed to deliver financially on its initial promise for Boeing and its suppliers. This outcome reflects the inherent shortcomings of an overly compartmentalized development and manufacturing process. Consequently, Boeing opted against repeating this approach, 
emerging from the global financial crisis, with consumer demand for air travel resurging and Airbus launching its new generation of fuel-efficient A320 narrow-body aircraft, Boeing faced limited options. Airbus was gaining ground with buyers who had previously been loyal to Boeing. Boeing faced a critical decision, either develop a fuel-efficient narrow-body aircraft or risk losing market share to Airbus in its core profit-generating segment. However, with Boeing's top engineers and finances focused on resolving issues with the troubled 787, they couldn't quickly establish a new production system or pursue the outsourcing strategy again. This left them with practically no option but to modify their nearly five-decade-old 737 design to meet the demand for a fuel-efficient narrow-body aircraft. Under pressure, Boeing reverted to a more traditional development and manufacturing approach, seeking to take on more tasks internally while outsourcing to a select group of suppliers with whom they could collaborate closely. Among these suppliers, Spirit Aerosystems played a crucial role. Located in Wichita, Kansas, this factory had long been responsible for building Boeing fuselages, which were then transported by rail for final assembly in Seattle. Spirit's significance stemmed from its history with Boeing. It was formerly a part of Boeing itself. The Wichita division had contributed to the construction of some of Boeing's most iconic aircraft, including the B-29, B-47, and B-52. In the early 2000s, faced with the need for funds to support the simultaneous construction of the 787, satisfy investors, and meet the demands of new management, Boeing pursued a divestiture strategy. They sold off plants in St. Louis, Spokane, Corinth, Irving, and now turned their attention to Wichita and Tulsa. With these sales, Boeing and its shareholders received a $1.2 billion windfall and Spirit Aerosystems emerged as an independent company, essentially continuing its previous operations, but now as an autonomous entity. However, this move did not yield favorable results. In response to the significant cost overruns of the 787 program, Boeing initiated the Partnering for Success program, albeit with an anachronistic name. Boeing framed this initiative as seeking opportunities to enhance the aircraft product for their end customers by collaborating closely with suppliers. However, from the supplier's perspective, the reality was quite different. They felt they were being unfairly treated. Boeing approached suppliers like UTC, manufacturer of the 777 landing gear, and demanded a reduction of approximately 15% in the cost of the same part. When UTC refused, Boeing awarded the landing gear contract to Heru DevTech, a relatively obscure manufacturer, which was a significant win for them. These suppliers, who had invested in developing parts for Boeing's aircraft out of trust in a mutually beneficial relationship, suddenly found themselves being asked to accept lower compensation for their efforts. For suppliers in the aerospace industry, Boeing, Airbus, and Embraer are the primary customers for major commercial aircraft components. The imbalance of power is glaring. Suppliers rely heavily on Boeing for business. Consequently, many reluctantly agreed to the price cuts in the hope of securing more orders in the future, despite skepticism about the promised benefits of increased volume. While Boeing may have anticipated that pressuring suppliers would lead to optimization and innovation, the reality was a rise in disruptive manufacturing issues. The promised mutual success failed to materialize, and Boeing's decision to iterate on the 737 design rather than develop a new aircraft proved disastrous. The larger size of the more fuel-efficient engines on the MAX resulted in slightly different flight characteristics, potentially requiring additional and costly training for pilots certified on previous generations of the 737 to fly the MAX. To address this, Boeing introduced a software solution called MCAS, which essentially adjusted the pilot's inputs to ensure the aircraft handled similarly to previous generations, even though it wouldn't have done so without the software. However, a flaw in this system, linked to a single sensor, 
was the primary cause of the fatal crashes of Lion Air Flight 610 in 2018 and Ethiopian Airlines Flight 302 in 2019, leading to the grounding of the aircraft type for 20 months. This grounding resulted in the loss of hundreds of orders and nearly $20 billion in revenue. Moreover, Boeing halted MAX production for months in 2020 and resumed production at a significantly reduced rate amid the COVID pandemic. Even today, MAX production has not returned to pre-shutdown levels, posing significant challenges for suppliers. Suppliers such as Spirit Aerosystems have faced considerable difficulties as a result. They have had to implement substantial layoffs to preserve cash, lost many experienced workers, and witnessed notable declines in their market valuations. Currently, suppliers like Spirit are a significant source of Boeing's problems, as the two companies have been engaged in intense disputes. Spirit Aerosystems, in particular, has been responsible for numerous defects that have passed quality assurance checks. The relationship between Boeing and its former Kansas division is gradually improving under new management and a revised Boeing contract. This new agreement allows Spirit to finally earn profits from its contributions to the 787 after suffering losses of over $1 million on each aircraft since 2007. However, a myriad of issues plagues various companies involved in the production process, ranging from strategic failures to software bugs, production challenges, and inadequate responses to external pressures. The only common thread among these issues is that they are all part of the intricate, global, multi-company system responsible for building Boeing aircraft. This leads to the conclusion that the system itself is flawed. The machine that manufactures the machine is broken. Boeing, as the orchestrator of this complex process, bears the responsibility for its dysfunction. The company is struggling to consistently translate its engineering marvels into reliable, standardized products. The question remains, why? In today's commercial aircraft market, products are essentially commodities. The 737 competes with the A320 and the 787 with the A350. While there are differences, orders primarily depend on which manufacturer can offer a similar product quicker or at a lower cost. Boeing and Airbus have responded to these market dynamics differently. Both have focused on improving their manufacturing processes, although Airbus notably avoided an extractive strategy with its suppliers and cultural conflicts within its workforce. Airbus prioritized supply chain stability by internalizing certain processes. This stability has allowed Airbus to gradually transform the younger A320 into the best-selling airplane of all time. In the entrenched duopoly of Boeing and Airbus, both companies know they will receive orders regardless. Therefore, their financial success hinges on their ability to efficiently and affordably produce aircraft. Boeing's approach, however, has fallen short. Aircraft manufacturing is inherently challenging and achieving profitability adds another layer of difficulty. Boeing's relentless pursuit of financial returns for investors has not yielded the desired results. Manufacturing an aircraft capable of safe, reliable operation for decades amidst various environmental conditions while striving for profitability has proven exceptionally challenging. This process is fundamentally distinct from typical manufacturing endeavors. It's akin to assembling a masterpiece in a Michelin-starred kitchen rather than simply putting together a toaster. Assembling a hamburger can be standardized, segmented, optimized, and outsourced, allowing for efficient production and improved financial results. However, the same principles don't apply to Michelin-starred franchises. Dictating recipes don't achieve the best food in the world. It's a result of numerous factors, including high-quality ingredients, a clean workspace, well-designed kitchens, competitive pay to attract top talent, sustainable work schedules, mentorship programs, and meticulous attention to detail. Boeing's attempt to operate like a Michelin-starred kitchen with a fast-food mindset is proving unsuccessful. Boeing once possessed an unparalleled ability to lead the aerospace industry into new eras with its remarkable machines. 
However, as time passes, its capacity to return to that level of excellence diminishes. Talented individuals are leaving, and the expertise required for building new aircraft is becoming scarce. Cost consciousness has led to cost overruns, perpetuating a cycle of financial struggle. Despite its ability to produce safe aircraft and secure orders, Boeing faces challenges in achieving financial success while meeting market demands. Boeing finds itself in a precarious position, while its competitor, Airbus, remains relatively stable. There's no single solution to Boeing's woes. Rather, it requires a fundamental shift in approach. To escape this predicament, Boeing must focus on continuous improvement across all levels of its organization. In an industry where even minor issues can have significant consequences, Boeing's failure lies in its belief that it can cut corners without repercussions. Although Boeing is the United States' sole commercial aircraft manufacturer, Lockheed Martin serves as another aerospace giant. While Lockheed Martin specializes in military aircraft, its approach to design and manufacturing differs significantly from Boeing's, particularly in its emphasis on research and development. For instance, Lockheed Martin's B-2 bomber, with its incorporation of numerous new technologies, exemplifies the substantial investment required for military aircraft production. Boeing's journey from resilience to decline underscores the challenges inherent in the aerospace industry. Despite past successes, the company now faces significant hurdles in maintaining its position in the market. A fundamental shift in approach is necessary for Boeing to navigate these challenges and regain its footing in the industry. Thank you for joining us on this insightful exploration of Boeing's rise and fall. Subscribe to the Rich Havit channel for more insights into the world of finance and economics.